All right, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be covering the Vito Pro Pack. It's the MB3B series bag here. That means it's got the plastic card base, which is pretty amazing. Loving this bag so far. As you can see, it's been used pretty extensively. You can see the plastic here wearing through. I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, not really speaking much on the quality per se, but it is showing you that this, I've definitely, Put it through his paces so so yeah i've got a pretty decent feel on it so far I've, um you know i've used it for about the last four or five months now and as you see i could i actually added my own straps to it to make it a book pack a backpack so you i just had um these are proper veto straps here that i got from my other mb2 in this bag and all i did was well i put a little bit more of a sophisticated loop on here i used a wire tie through these I don't know. I've never, I never understood what these little hoops are for, but I just kind of looped the wire tie through there, and I hooked these straps up through here, and then at the base, as you can see here on the base, I just um, used a wire tie, and I've got them off here to the sides. So that way, when you put them, when you put it down, the straps aren't going all underneath it and making it lopsided when you're. Uh, you know putting it down in the houses and stuff so it's a pretty sweet mod i love it as a backpack the other than that let's go ahead and go through it and see what we've got i guess we can start with the the big ticket stuff here and the main pouch All right so as you can see i had noticed that um i've been watching a few videos and um looks like they actually came out with the the newer mb3 style backpacks official backpacks by Vito but it's so strange because these zippers they only zipper open to like here and you expect to get your stuff out of this little small area this one I mean I, I don't understand why they would do that but this makes so much more sense if anything you would think you'd have it zipper open more but uh with the real thing but whatever so anyway as you can see I've got uh, my field piece manometers in here and I'm just using a little pouch to hold those tight with the tubing and just all my gas tubing to hook up to gas uh, gas valves. Those are the job link manometers. Really sweet. I keep another test of manometer in here just in case I need three manometers. But it's not really necessary. It's, it's not necessary all the time really rarely ever necessary this is going to be my testo 805i this is just a infrared thermometer it's okay not really i just keep it in there just in case you might need an infrared thermometer um these babies here probably one of my most used workhorses out here that i use is uh the field piece job link jl3 psychrometers yeah, I use these suckers every day, multiple times a day, without fail. So yeah, if you're a newer tech, these here should be the first on your list. Some of the first tools on your list. And I'll, as I'm going through this review, I'll show you and I'll be telling you what you're going to be needing. I probably should say these manometers as well. Because you're going to be needing manometers to check static pressures and gas pressures, things like that. So pretty much the whole field kit, field piece job link kit. And we've got this here. That's the field piece SE680. I know this has made a, a few um, appearances on my videos. Love this meter. Like I said, I've had a few little hiccups with different, uh, you know, just different meters, but this one's been holding up for me, so can't complain about it. I like to keep my plastics coming off of here, but I might as well just take that off, whatever. I like to keep my um, Inficon D-Tech Stratus on me at all times, just because leaks are so... Uh, prominent nowadays you always want to have your leak detector on you at least me me personally i do this is an amazing leak detector the reason i love it so much is just that it, it, it displays part per million you can hone in on a leak very quickly just the fact that it's it uses um infrared leak detecting rather than the other heated diode style it's it's just not not as sensitive to other uh, gases or different things that might cause it to have false positives this thing i've never experienced have a false hit now my other UEI, I forgot the model, but that thing always used to have false hits. It's so frustrating. And then I also keep this here 
that's going to be your AccuTrack VPE ultrasonic leak detector. That's just a kind of nice to have in case you're not able to find a leak with the the sniffer there. So then we have that's pretty much the whole inside casing. As you can see here, it's got this pretty sweet little insert. I guess I can pull it out. Whatever, right? Well, you know what? Yeah, let me just pull that out. I got some uh that's some mosquito repellent. I keep that on me, and you already know why. Sometimes when it's outside and the mosquitoes attack you, it's impossible to focus. Pull these out, get you a couple of these. They they do the job, man. They really help. And that's just gonna be a tape squeegee. There you go. I also like to keep a duculator up in the back pouch. Why not, right? I've got a little pocket for it. That's just a you want a quick reference, your uh, sizing. So this little insert just pops right out. And this is what makes this, this bag superior for your more sensitive um, electronics. I actually had to add, I had um, a camera case and I had some inserts in there, Velcro style inserts that I was able to put some more partitions in there. But it only comes factory with this one partition, which is kind of like, that's a little bit stingy. I mean, what do you expect? I'm just gonna have two things in there, you know? So either way, you can get these partitions fairly cheap if ever you needed them. You know, as you can see, it's pretty spacious in there without the partition. So if you wanted to use it raw without that partition, you'd have a lot more uh, real estate. I just like to keep my stuff neat and orderly. So we're just gonna go ahead and maintain that. Pop that back in there like such. So then it's got a little front pocket here, which I just keep my headphones in here for my ultrasonic leak detector. A couple sets of uh, headphones, cheap headphones. Got my uh, alligator clips for my field piece probes. This is for the ultrasonic. It's just like a little straw if you want to hone in real close on your um, leaks spots and things like that. Then I've got two thermocouples that come with the field piece meter. And some, uh, these are really sweet. I love these, actually. I had to little, make a little pocket pouch for them, just because the one that came with was just, well, actually, this is the one it came with, but it started tearing up on me. So I just had to kind of fortify it with some tape here. But uh, these are just going to be my Molex plugs here. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in there. Off to the sides here. As you can see, I like to keep my probe, my pressure transducers and temperature clamps on the outside because once again, they're very, they're, they're used often. So, you know, I just whip them right out like such. So we've got low side over here. Uh, these are the field piece JL series, JL3 PR. Once again, newer techs, older techs, whatever. These are a must. I don't even care if you get one set. I'd rather have the whole kit for me, but, you know, I like to just keep these caps on them. What I do, these are just caps off of um, liquid line filter dryers and you can just kind of squish them down like press them down onto the table like such and it kind of flares it out like that it fits in there nicely you have to thread it in kind of and it doesn't fall out but if you don't squish it down they will fall out so and then I've got the high side over here and I actually started using this here thumb screw I'm liking it so far I guess but I wasn't really, with these field piece probes, I really haven't had an issue too much with too much liquid blowback um, when taking them off or putting them on, but uh, I don't know. I just want to give it a shot. So this is just a little thumb screw adapter here. And what it does is um, it allows you to put the pressure transducer on without actually depressing the Schrader core uh, valve. So you can screw it on without, without depressing and shooting liquid on. And then once it's sealed, you turn this thumb screw in like such, and you can see in there that thing actually protrudes out or screw it out. It recesses in behind the gasket, and that's how that works. I like it. It's okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. On this side, my apologies. On the low side, I always keep my T, charging T, with a lossless fitting. And that's for connecting to my low side probe. I'll just, boom, connect it like that. Then I can attach my hose to this side 
keep my Schrader core remover on the back there, Schrader core removing cap. Yeah, you can charge with this here. It's just a charging tee with a little less fitting. And then also here I keep just, no, that's not airborne. I just keep caps in there for you know, Schrader valves. And then in this pocket as well, underneath those are going to be, I'm sure you, I'm sure you can guess. Let's see. Schrader cores. All right. So that's everything for the outside. And here, here I've got just my spare non-contact voltage tester. And I keep one on my, my TP3B, but I want to keep one of these on in every bag. I've got multiple of them, so why not? This one, the tip broke off, but it's not affecting anything. Why not? Just may as well keep one on every bag, right? That right there is going to be Schrader core remover tool with a mini split adapter. Put a cap that I got off a gas valve on there just to keep it clean. Keep debris and everything from getting up in there. So yeah, that's going to be all my pockets there. Now let's go to the front here. As you can see, straightforward. Just a little fuel piece thermometer. Nothing special there. Nothing to be talked about. Thermostat screwdriver. Nest thermostat screwdriver. I always like to keep these if I have a nest to install. It's just going to be a bit. A quarter inch. No, I believe that's going to be a three-eighths drill bit with some tape on it to make sure you don't yeah that's tape kind of slid back on us but drill bit there got an ink saw milwaukee milwaukee blade it's going to be the fast back and then i keep some tape measure small tape measure nice low profile that way not taking up too much space. You don't really need anything too crazy long when doing service. Mostly you're just checking filter grill sizes, filter sizes, cabinet sizes, you know, things like that. Entry point, length of the attic access, plus, you know, really small stuff. So you don't really need a full size tape measure nine times out of 10. And if I do, I have one in the truck, in the van, whatever. A couple alligator clips here, just a few terminators. So these are just wire termination. And I've got one of my favorite tools. The Short Pro, new guys, you guys need this here, man. Short Pro, it just makes finding shorts so quick. There's a little LED in here, and what happens is you pretty much put this on each side of your, take the fuse out and kind of put this in the circuit, you know, in the series, the way the fuse is. And what happens is that there's a short, this little light, there's a resistor in here. This little light will actually illuminate if there's a short, and then once the short has been found, the light will go out once you um break the short so this makes things a lot quicker keep one of these this is just a three amp tripper i got a couple bits in here that's the big boy step bit another step bit and a small little uh, phillips head screwdriver so that's everything for the front pocket side pockets let's go here in here we've got a milwaukee led red lithium uh, usb flashlight this thing puts out a thousand lumens. I think 1100, sorry. Really nice flashlight. Kills the battery real quick, but it takes the USB 3.0s. It's a really nice flashlight. Always another thing, flashlights, lighting, man. It's the main, it's going to be one of the most important things as a tech you can have. That's why you see I've got many headlamps, many flashlights. Keep a couple wire ties. Keep those in every bag as well. This here is just going to be a Klein Tools uh, outlet tester. Don't need this so much for HVAC, but I do other things um, where I might need this, so I keep that in my bag. Property management, stuff like that. So uh, then I've also got, boom, my Testo 410i vein anemometer. Love this thing. Just used this the other day on a, a call where the, um, the damper, the fire damper was shut down on one of the apartment air handlers in an apartment complex so i just use it for the fun of it i already i mean it takes you two seconds to see if that that damper is fail is uh failed closed but you know it's good to verify with tools every once in a while then i've got the 410i i meant sorry my apologies this is the um i got velcro over this stupid thing this is the 405 hot wire anemometer it's just all my airflow stuff in here 
And there I just keep batteries. I usually have triple A's, but I just ran out, so I've got to replenish those. So I've got some double A's in there. I've got some USB C cable, USB both styles of USB C cable. All right, I'm not even gonna work bother taking that out of there. Then for the back, probably the third use tool. I like using this this um, TEC, which is the Energy Conservatory um, DG8. I love using this to use to check static pressures. Anytime I need a manometer, I don't really use this for gas pressures though, just because I'm probably trying to preserve it a little bit. This is a micro manometer, so. But I do love using this for my main manometer. Either way, I just like it because it's a little quicker. Even the, even though it is Bluetooth, still, just looking at the being able to check the display. I know I'm kind of going backwards, but it's cool to just be able to quickly check the display every once in a while. Got our micro manometer there. So hoses. That's the blue hose for your manometer. A couple more hoses. These for my field piece. So these are going to be our static pressure tip. So yeah, I've got a small static pressure tip as well. That came with the TEC manometer. These came with the field piece. That's going to be uh, the Seek Compact Pro thermal imager. I honestly, I need to use these more. I'm not going to lie, but I don't use these that often. Actually, I almost barely ever use these. They are, there is a use for them, but I just don't, I don't get around to using them like that. So we will cover some different ways you can utilize these. I actually have used these to find like duct work that's disconnected up in the ceiling. You can see the cold spots and I was able to locate that and repair that, repair the actual broken uh, duct work. So they are, they have, they have their uses. Just now I'm not gonna use them that often, that's all. Inspection camera, pretty decent little camera. Then I've got another thermal camera. This is the Fleer Compact Pro. And that's it. That's actually everything. And you know, you've got your standard. I've got some, a step bit over here. Matter of fact, let's make sure that's in there. See that thing almost wanted to fall out on me? I heard someone complaining about how these will lose your bits, but whatever. Some tape, electrical tape, always necessary. So yeah, as you can see, I mean, I fit all that in this one bag. It's a pretty decent amount of kit. It all doesn't get used that often. But when I need it, I've got it on my person, so that's pretty much why I carry this. Rather need it and not have it than, what is it? Have it, not need it. Need it and not have it. What did it, anyway. Well, yeah, either way. So this is the way to do it. This is the way I do. Um, this is the kit that I keep on me from day to day. If you have any other questions on this, uh, what, let me know what you think. If you uh, go lighter than this, I know pretty much most people... They roll a whole lot lighter than this, to be honest with you. I just like to have everything I need. And if you think about it, most of it's really the essentials. I mean, you got your meters, psychrometers, transducers, and temperature clamps, manometers. So yeah, and then leak detectors. So like and subscribe if this did help out. If this helped you guys out as far as what type of tools to, to um, invest in. Matter of fact, everything you see here would be pretty much vital. It'll be a tool that you would not regret investing in. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.